Hey guys, what's good? It's your boy Pook here. Right, now I've got the longboard. I have got pretty much everything I need. I say pretty much because at the point I was doing this video, I did kind of make a little tiny, tiny, tiny mistake. Only a tiny mistake. Only cost me 50 quid, but <laughs> ayo, that's what it is. And the mistake was nothing to do with this. This is this is the receiver and this is the transmitter. So they're all good. That wasn't the problem. My batteries, you know, even though they're only 3,000 milliamp and only 11.1 .1 volts, put them in series. That gives me my 22 volts. That's not majorly the problem. No, we've even got the lead there for it. Wire, bam, bam, bish, bosh, bash. What the problem was, was after I put these batteries in series together, this ESC that I bought, haha, <laughs> only goes up to 4S. And I was trying to run 6S off it, and I completely did not think so. With this ESC here, I can only run the 11 volts through the batteries to that motor. Because I'm restricted by the ESC, I have been out and I've bought a newer ESC, which is 150 amp, which can handle 6S, and that does handle the both the back both them two batteries in uh, series together to give you the 22.2 volts. So I have done updated versions on this, and I will be throwing out the video very shortly after this one because there is some modifications I have made. So there's a 3D printed boxes I've printed for the uh, batteries oh don't forget as well if you do get, get any kind of ESC it's always wise to get a programming card I mean it just makes life 10 times easier and then you're not playing the beep beep game uh, when I when I was pretty new to ESCs when you're trying to configure an ESC it was uh, pretty hard listening to all the beeps and trying to understand it especially when the ESC that I got was kind of English sorry Chinese translated to English yeah, not really the easiest thing to understand, but hey, I'll give it a go and we've got it all working. But with that ESC, I was uh, took it all apart, getting ready to solder it all together. As you can see, we have the little connectors and the bullet connectors there. So you just solder them onto the uh, wires accordingly. It's fairly simple. If, if, if you can use a soldering iron, it's like pretty much touch it, heat it up, dab a little bit of solder on it, hold it together, bit of solder, bish bosh done. And that's what I did in this video. As you can see, there's not really much going on at the minute because I was just getting my uh, soldering iron hot. The soldering iron need, does need to be pretty hot when you're using this. Now, I have enjoyed making this. This is probably one of the best projects that I've actually done over the uh, space of my YouTube channel. It's, it's been a little bit tricky. I mean, I th in the first video I said uh, it's, <laughs> it's going to be pretty easy to do this, but one of the main problems I did have is with my motor mount itself mounting it to the axle uh, it comes with uh, three grub screws that you use to pinch against the axle once you put the mount or mount on and that holds itself to the axle and then you can attach the motor to that one of my problems was the grub screws were not pinching correctly now there is a few different ways you can sort this and I went with the JB weld it which is basically an epoxy metal um, a deep, uh, metal resin that's basically it's basically an epoxy resin with I presume loads of metal fibers inside you know little metal filings metal dust so when it when it's hard it sets like like tensile you know you can drill into it so it's basically just an epoxy weld and I use that uh, it did start cracking under a little bit of vibration but then I put just some normal epoxy over that and with it being kind of a rubbery material the normal epoxy it's held the crack together and it's it's working fine but one of the things I would definitely suggest if you're ever doing something like this is either get a motor mount that is going to be pretty tight onto the mo um, onto the axle of the skateboard or you can still just go with the one that I've bought the cheap one but just drill straight through the axle if you can if you've got a drill press you can just do that put the uh, axle in a clamp and drill find the point where you want to line up the axle and then you drill through that I mean, you don't even have to drill all the way through you could literally just drill in a couple of mil where the grub screw is going to sit in that way when you do pinch the grub screw into the uh, axle you know that it's going to actually stick and hold the axle on because basically the, the axle just spins round the axle the sorry the bracket spins around the axle if it's not tight enough and after a bit the vibrations of the skateboard just traveling along the road 
surface causes enough vibrations to make the bracket come loose and that's even with Loctite so just beware if you, if you are buying one of the cheaper motor mounts and as I say I've got loads of things around me I can use to try and bodge it and make it work but I will be doing another video on a more of a professional build because as I say this is the first skateboard build that I've done and with it being the first skateboard build I've pretty much gone into it pretty blind not really knowing so obviously this board is a learning curve for me I'm thinking about actually once once I've got the design perfect and set I'm also going to get a, a vacuum forming machine so I can pretty much start making all the battery compartments and um, uh, ESC compartments quicker so rather than 3D which 3D printing does take a lot of time so if you're going to be doing this from a you know a selling point of view if I was to build these skateboards and then sell them it would be pretty pretty difficult using the 3D printer because it'll just take me weeks and weeks and weeks just to print out a couple of well obviously if you're trying to do this from a manufacturing line saying somebody wants five a day you have to print out two of them boxes for each skateboard it's going to be well that's just going to be I would say around about 10 hours for two boxes so <laughs> you got to think of it like that so I'm going to be building a vacuum forming machine it's going to be a DIY vacuum form so I will be doing a project on that so keep tuned for future videos yeah, sorry about I'm boring you with this video as well, guys. It's <laughs> I was having a little bit of struggles with the solder. That's only because I've not got a soldering station yet. I need to get myself a soldering station. A soldering station is just pretty much a little station with two articulated arms, and they've got little um, crocodile clips on the end, so that you can pretty much hold anything you need to solder, and then your hands are free to use the solder iron. Obviously, I'm using a Stanley knife in the video. <laughs> I was actually really struggling just to get that on just because the wires are so like thick and they wanted to bend up trying to get everything to hold down but yeah I think this is probably the, the, the biggest struggle I've ever had with my soldering iron <laughs> absolutely mental so what we're gonna do now is we will uh, go out on the skateboard once we've finished soldering this up as I say this is the older ESC and with the CSC I was only going at probably faster than walking speed. There was one of my, fr <laughs> one of my friend's daughters, uh, she, they only live around the corner from me, she saw me going down the road on my skateboard at like pretty much walking speed and she, she sort of gave me a funny look and I was thinking, didn't really think much of it. I've got home, I think I'm stood in my front garden, next minute she's come flying down the walk. <laughs> Literally come flying down the road on her little electric scooter and oh my god, I, I had to hang my head in shame. I, I, I didn't want to go out on my skateboard again until I got my new SC, put it that way. She, she, she did kind of embarrass me. Knowing that an eight-year-old girl can fly past faster than you is um, nothing short of embarrassing. <laughs> That's all I can say about that guy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to finish up with this ESC. Uh, take it out for a quick little ride and this ride will only be the 11.1 volts of speed. So it is pretty slow. Um, it's faster than walking speed, you know what I mean? You can cruise on it, you can happily cruise on it. I think it's a good safe speed for, you know, if you want your kids to have a go over a skateboard, it's a good speed for them to start on. So I'll show you a little bit of this running and then I'll also in the next video, I'll show you basically what, I, what the modifications I've done with this board and all the f future mods that I've got planned for this board that are going to be able to make it run all day without basically running out of any kind of energy. It's going to be, be able to travel a lot longer. So, we'll just show you on this video now, and uh, let you check it out. Understand it, I'm a fucking bandit.
get it, get it.